Hey, Tim here. Maybe I'm crazy, but doesn't everyone seem to drink coffee around this time of the year? During these crisp winter mornings, even my friends who don't usually drink coffee seem to partake during the colder months. Is this trend strictly because of its warm and comforting taste, or is it because of something else? Whatever the case may be, coffee is a crucial part of the morning for many people and is often the only thing dichotomizing a construction worker from Betty White. Personally, my coffee addiction can be wholly attributed to the chemical compound known as caffeine. I have the same routine every morning. I wake up out of my brutish slumber, I trip over Chloe here, and then I go straight to the coffee pot for the day's first cup of coffee. However, I never actually stop to ask myself, why does coffee actually wake me up in the morning? So this week, we're going to talk about caffeine's role in the brain. First, it's important to note that adenosine triphosphate, otherwise known as ATP, is the most basic unit of energy within our bodies. Our cells use this compound for nearly everything, whether it's waste removal or cellular growth and reproduction. Without ATP, our bodies would simply die. Also, it's important to note that adenosine is necessary to form adenosine triphosphate. It should be obvious, but remember that. Now, our brains contain these adenosine receptors that are strictly there to receive adenosine. Basically, imagine adenosine being a key and the adenosine receptor being the corresponding lock. Unfortunately though, when adenosine bonds to an adenosine receptor, there is less free adenosine available in the brain to form energy-rich ATP molecules. Essentially, this translates to less available energy for the cells in your brain to use, which can make you feel drowsy. And this is where good old caffeine comes in. What do we do now? Go back. When you slug back that morning cup of joe, the caffeine molecules actually travel through the blood-brain barrier and into your brain. And this is where things get really interesting. When these caffeine molecules arrive on the scene, they see adenosine molecules binding to the receptors like it's going out of style, causing you to feel sleepy. And this is when caffeine says, it's only 3 a.m. boys, and this kid has a paper due tomorrow. We can't let him down. Caffeine's molecular structure is so similar to adenosine's that it is actually able to mimic the momentous molecule, and that's exactly what it does. More specifically, Caffeine actually binds to the adenosine receptors in the brain, which in turn frees up more adenosine to make energy-rich ATP. This increase in ATP leads to more energy within our brains, along with experiencing an improved sense of alertness and well-being. So, long story short, adenosine binding to its receptors means less ATP and therefore less energy. But when you drink coffee, the caffeine binds to these receptors instead, increasing available adenosine and subsequently ATP. So, at the end of the day, caffeine is nothing but a great actor.